Hello there, Aries. Welcome to your tarot reading. So uh, you've got some really interesting images that came up when I was shuffling out the spread for you. You've got some great things, by the way. And um, let me just talk about a few things first that I saw. And I'll unpack them via the spread. Um, um, so when I was shuffling out the, the spread for you, what I saw was um, I see this tunnel. It's underground. And it's a long tunnel, but there is a, this really beautiful pinkish white light at the end of the tunnel and I see this uh, puppy he's a black or uh, he, he's a black puppy with some white spots on him he's wagging his tail and he's happily walking through this tunnel because he sees the light on the other side now animals have amazing instincts and I know this is a puppy and he's you know finding his way but um, as he's moving closer and closer to the light, what's at the end of the tunnel is uh, I see um, a big like doggy bag of food and it's spilled over. So it's like, you know, uh, spilled over on the ground. So of course he's going to get some food. And then I also feel like there are these, uh, it's, it's almost like walking into, and I, I feel like, you know, initially when it's like the light at the end of the tunnel, you think it's going to be lit up with fluorescent light. But what's really lighting uh, things at the end of that tunnel is like gold coins, medallion, gold coins, things that are shiny and shimmery and glittery. And that's what's creating all that light. So the dog is definitely in the right place. He has no use for, you know, the coins and the money and the gold, but somebody can get it to, um, it, it's almost like the dog is the pioneer and he's discovering these things. So whoever walks in his footstep is going to come across this treasure. Okay. So it's a very beautiful imagery. And I feel like, you know, his, 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 uh, if he's hungry, his needs are going to be met. If he is looking for work, that's going to be coming into the picture as well. If he's looking for resources, it's going to be there. So I definitely feel like you're verging on the end of a cycle where you're going to be able to get all your needs met. So that's the, uh, the first image. The second image that I feel here is, um, I keep seeing this, this, um, cartoon looking fairy and, um, you know, I, I don't know the movie. I think it might've been, um, sleeping beauty where the, the fairy godmothers, there are three of them, I believe, and they're kind of pudgy. They're a little bit on the heavier side. So I see this 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 pudgy um, fairy, and she has like really small wings, and the wings are like flapping. And she's, uh, she's holding this wand, and she's smiling, so she seems like very benevolent. And I feel like um, she's like smoothing out somebody's hair, like comforting them, smoothing things out. Um, making a situation better, ironing things out, and just overall, there's this really strong energy of spiritual, ancestral protection coming through for you, okay? So whatever it is, you don't need to fear it. You need to be kind of like, be able to trust your intuition and trust your instinct, kind of like this puppy, okay? To walk into the unknown, to walk into the unknown without armor, without any way to defend yourself and to trust that you're walking in the right direction because there's going to be food at the end of the tunnel. So that's what I saw. And uh, I remember when I did the reading for you at the very beginning of the month, you guys have uh, embarked on a journey and you're waiting for a situation. And I mentioned you were trying to flap your wings, trying to get to your destination, right? And it feels like it feels like it's it's very difficult and it feels very labor intensive and it just feels like you're tired like you need a rest like you you just want to land and just stay where you're at and not have to move so i feel like uh energetically there might be some drainage there might be a situation where you're feeling a little bit tired a little bit under the weather a little bit just um vitality is very low this could be with somebody that you're dealing with if you're taking care of elderly parents if you're taking care of people in your midst there's somebody here that is very stubborn they know what they have to do and they know what's good for them but they're refusing refusing to partake in activities or or taking their medicine or doing things um that would actually be beneficial like um I see somebody who's cooped up in the home for a very long time 
and I see them, uh, I see you trying to, you know, get them to move. Okay. So like, do you want to go on a hike? You, you need some fresh air. Let's go on a hike. And they're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm okay where I'm at right now. And you're trying to tell them, hey, why don't we take a trip so that you can get your mind off things? They're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm okay here. And so I feel like you're, you're, you're having difficulty trying to get somebody out of the house. And I feel like for some of you elderly parents, for others, it's somebody that is lacking in vitality and they don't want to do these physical activities. And it could be they're physically lacking in vitality or emotionally they're they're feeling a little bit cooped up and they don't really want to um, they they don't want to do what they know deep down is good for them. OK, so they're trying to avoid doing the self work. OK, um, what I'm also seeing as well, we have here the Ace of Wands. And. Um, we have as well, this is the page of wands, okay? You guys are definitely embarking on something brand new. This could be a project. This could be a new job. This could be some type of a creative venture that you're very excited about and you're going to be undertaking wholeheartedly. There's a lot of hopefulness and optimism associated with this. This is a, an opportunity for you to kind of prove yourself. No longer a child, um, protected and coddled. We're now becoming a little bit more, you know, we're, we're growing up and we have skills that we want to display to the rest of the world. Okay. So I feel like you're embarking on a brand new journey and I feel like it's forcing you to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. But I do sense that you have a lot riding on this. And I also feel like you're going to be, it's in your element, you know, fire signs, the suit of wands. It's in your element, which basically means you're going to transition into it very naturally without any type of hurdles to overcome, with any, without any type of a learning curve, without any type of, um, I want to say, without any type of setbacks. OK, so if you've been fearful of doing this in the past or if you've been feeling like, you know, once again, uh, self-esteem, I, I don't know if I'm ready for this just yet. Maybe in two years, maybe in three months, you know, I need to get myself prepared for it. If for whatever reason you've been holding back, holding back, holding back, and now you feel like I'm going to do this and I'm going to I feel like it's the right time and I'm going to embark on it wholeheartedly. And I'm going to show my skills. So I definitely feel the learning curve is not going to be a problem for you. There isn't a learning curve. It seems to me like it's more like a, a, a straight path. OK, and we also have as well the straight shooter. This is communication, contact, a lot of exchanges over wide distances. So I definitely feel a lot of communication, a lot of um, interaction back and forth via um, electronic communication, um, emails, text messages. Um, what I'm seeing as well, I see many of you are keeping in contact with a lot of people, okay, going back and forth. And I do see as well, I don't know why there's this mirroring energy here, but I feel like uh, there's a lot of going back and forth, a lot of communication, a lot of long distance communication. And so make sure, and I, I do see geographical uh, distance as well, but it's going to hit the mark. Okay. So this is a card that traditionally facilitates travel and movement and communication in general, the way that it's coming out, they're saying that you're going to hit the mark. So the distance is not really going to matter. Things are going to be arriving very, very smoothly and transition very smoothly for you. So you don't, don't have to worry. And there's still, okay, the mirroring energy makes sense now. There's some type of a spiritual protection. I mentioned before the ancestral protection. And it's almost like whatever hits this mirror is going to bounce back. Okay, so if it's malintention, it's going to be sent back or boomerang back to the sender. So if you've been dealing with any situation where you feel like you have to shield yourself or if you have to um, kind of keep your opponents at bay or try to keep the negativity, you know, 
away from you. I feel that there is going to be some reprieve from that. And especially there's going to be some type of divine protection where it's going to bounce back that energy and it's not going to energetically affect you. So there's a lot of protection coming through from the spread. Um, I feel like in a mundane sense, for example, if you have a deadline and for whatever, uh, situ uh, for whatever the, the, uh, for whatever reason, um, if you fail to miss the deadline, for example, I feel like, you know, the, the divine protection can come in in a way where the deadline is pushed back because so-and-so that was supposed to be there to review the final product happens to be sick. So you have like that extra day to get things done. So it's like buying time. Somebody is stepping in and it's divine protection that is going to allow you to extend a deadline to a later date. That's more to your liking. Okay. Um, and I also sense as well, if, um, if there has been like some type of mistakes that you have made in the work environment, something minor, you know, like a typo, um, like if you're publishing, um, like a manual and there's a typo and, and it's going to be, or on a PowerPoint presentation and you're going to be in front of the entire, um, work crew giving this PowerPoint presentation and there's like a glaring typo. I feel like there, there might be some technology malfunction. No one sees it. And then, you know, there's an element about saving face. Okay. So I feel like you have some people behind the scenes working to kind of um, buffer you against whatever negativity, against whatever errors, against whatever typos and things like that. So you, you, you do have some really good things. And I feel for whatever reason, whenever I see the spiritual protection, I feel like they always come in because there is a reason for it. So needless to say, um, be very, very careful about, you know, um, doing your work diligently and making sure that you, whatever you put forward is the best represent, uh, my apologies for that noise, whatever you put forward or whatever you put out in, into the world, we still need to be mindful that it has to be a, a good or a uh, desirable representation of us. So it doesn't alleviate us from, you know, uh, throwing, dashing, you know, assignments off in the middle of the night you still have to do your due diligence and you still have to do the work. The spiritual protection that is behind you is to facilitate that process, but it doesn't alleviate you from doing your fair share of the work. But I definitely see you're being helped and you're being coddled and you're being in a situation where you are divinely protected. Okay. What I have here is uh, the four of cups and the seven of cups and both the four and the sevens are very, very spiritual numbers. They are indicative of uh, healing. They're indicative of as well, healing others. Okay. The healer and the teacher is, is what I'm sensing here. And I do sense there's a, a major difference here. This is about somebody who wants to maintain their distance. Okay. They're not going to get emotionally involved in other people's problems. They say their piece and they kind of leave it alone. They don't let the emotional undertones um, affect their decision or they don't get pulled into that emotional space where they're looking at things so subjectively that they're not able to see the forest for the trees. And then we also have the seven of cups. This is like that empathy and that sympathy, wanting to do things for another pe person feeling things so deeply where we feel like we have to step in and intervene. So there is this opposition here about you needing to protect your energy and needing to not get sucked into other people's emotional flare ups or even emotional trauma. So if you, for example, uh, have been doing a lot for other people. If you're somebody in your work environment that is doing all the work or that's like, you know, the, the go-to person when people have problems and when people are dealing with emotional crises in their life, if it keeps happening over and over and over again, you kind of have to take the stance of, you know, loving detachment. Okay. Not wanting to get involved, knowing when to push things away and knowing when to energetically not let other people's issues affect you 
if it's their problem, it's their problem. As much as we want to get involved, we kind of need to preserve our energy and need to draw very clear boundaries, okay? I mentioned uh, two weeks ago, there was this guilt, and I feel like it's coming into the picture. Wanting to do things for another person or feeling like telling yourself, oh, I can't do this because of A, B, C. And usually those A, B, C reasons are linked up with another person that you feel the sense of in, in indebtedness to. So I don't know, for some of you, I feel like somebody helped pave the way for you. Somebody uh, provided something so that you could do something else. And I feel like there's a sense of guilt. There's a sense of indebtedness. And I feel like it doesn't have to be that way. So you kind of need to draw back your energy and to also learn to, it, it's, it's almost like, yes, they built the foundation. You know, the fours are about the foundation. Yes, they built that foundation. But without your skills, without your diligence, without your hard work, you couldn't resurrect anything from that, that foundation. So they built the foundation, but it was your hard work that created everything else that came after. So you have to give yourself that credit and not feel that sense of indebtedness to another person. So I feel like there's something here where you are underestimating your capabilities or underestimating your strength, okay? Um, I'm seeing as well, we have here, shining away from the sunlight and the spotlight. So this is the five of wands. Not wanting to be in that sunlight or that spotlight. Conflict avoidant as well. Um, boundaries, okay? So making sure that you stand up for the things that you believe in. And this is something that I feel strange saying to an Aries because you guys are very militant about defending your beliefs. You guys are quite aggressive. When it comes to, you know, giving somebody your two cents, you know, you, you do get upset, you blow up, and then you get over it. But there is a situation here. The fives indicate opposition. It doesn't have to be nasty or um, drawn out or, you know, it, it can just be a situation where we do not see eye to eye with another person. And I feel like you're blocking away this conflict. And I feel that you need to kind of um, face it head on. Underneath it is the devil. And this is something that, you know, the devil is kind of like the 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 greatest like sleight of hand. Okay, so it, it's it's almost like we fear it because we feel like he might exist out there somewhere. But it's in our mind space. Okay, so it's it's almost like the imagination runs wild and we make a situation a lot scarier than it has to be. So unless we face it head on, it's going to be constantly, you know, um, this, this, this dreaded fear, but it's not very real. So unless we face it head on, we're not going to be able to banish the fears. We carry carry it with us. So, and once again, like I said, I feel like it's a little bit strange for me to mention this for you guys, for Aries, but I feel like there's something here where you're trying to, you're trying to avoid conflict. You're trying to hold back. You're trying to appease the other person and in a way succumbing to that too much and not voicing your opinion or not drawing boundaries or not being able to confront or face the situation head on i do feel that you're giving your power away okay so make sure that you are aware of this and you know say your piece hit your mark and move forward okay tackling things being strategic and especially communicating in a way where you're able to get your point across okay straightforward communication hitting your mark right here and not being afraid of whatever this uh, conflict this person is. Because I feel like the fear is a lot bigger in your head and in your psyche than it is in reality. Um, I'm also sensing here there is a huge uptick when it comes to your financial resources. And possibly being able to have two revenue streams. I have here the two of pentacles. Two sources of income. So it could be you and a partner. It could be you juggling two things. 
and I feel like something is very, very brand new. It needs to be taken seriously and treated almost like with, you know, kitty gloves, okay? Something that is very delicate. It needs an opportunity to grow and it needs to be taken very seriously. So you know how um, in the traditional Rider Waite deck, the two of pentacles is the man uh, juggling the, the two pentacles. In this situation, it's almost like, which one do I treasure? There are two cats here, and they're both, one is new, I guess one is, is a little bit more, this one looks like it's older, that one looks like it's a kitten, and so if it's brand new, you want to devote a little bit more time to it, okay, until it's self-sustaining, until it's self-sufficient. So this is pretty much telling you not so much to multitask, but to do something, whatever that's newer, whatever that you need to kind of like get off the ground in a very um, foundational way, establish that foundation first before you devote more time to what the, the existing thing. Okay, so treat things that are new, that are emerging with a little bit more care and a little bit more attention because they are, it's new and so it requires a lot more work, okay? So the initial work that you put in, it's going to pan out. Just be very diligent, be very patient with it and especially give it that care and that attention until it's able to uh, progress on its own, all right? Uh, finances is going to be picking up for you guys <clears throat> very quickly. Um, what I have here is the Eight of Pentacles. This is basically that harvest, okay? Um, being able to kind of like have something tangible to as proof of your hard work. So the seven is the harvest. The eight is at that point of completion almost. <coughs> Excuse me. And I feel like... I almost feel like there's this big energy about, you know, focusing, laser-like focus on one thing, birthing something, taking care of something that is brand new, nurturing it in order for it to grow for you. So I definitely see new projects that are in store for you. And I feel like it's going to pay dividends, but you have to kind of drop the other thing or put it in the back burner for now, come back to it at a later date, okay? I hope the reading is helpful for you guys, and um, I do wish you all the best for this month.